we have an agenda to support the creative economy and the future of everyone that is creative here today. So thank you so much for your time. I think after the next, we'll take questions after the presentation. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Chaz. Again, um, those who have questions, please write them down and then we'll have the, the open forum or the question and answer with our two plenary speakers after the talk of our second plenary speaker. So just uh, take down your notes. Okay, for our second plenary speaker, will he will be talking about the lead. So since we're all campus journalists, we know what is a lead. Okay, so for our next speaker, he is a graduate of PhD in Development Communication from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. He is also an associate professor from the College of Arts and Sciences of University of the Philippines, Vis Visayas, and a former director in, of the Teaching and Learning Research Center of UV, UP Visayas and the, the former director of the Graduate School of U, University of Iloilo, FINMA. He is, our speaker specializes in development communication, development journalism, communication research, media studies, advertising, and educational management. So please let's all give a warm round of applause to our speaker, our second plenary speaker, Dr. Zoilo Sarmiento Andrada. Hey, thank you, Jesser. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, how are you? Are you still uh, awake? Okay, can we please uh, stand up for a while and then do some stretch? Okay? Shake your hands. Okay, para relax style. Okay, because I'll, my lecture is uh, four hours. <laughs> okay, thank you. You can sit down. Okay, uh, my topic this afternoon is a very familiar one to everyone. Uh, it's lead writing. Uh, that's the most important uh, skill that you have to develop, especially if you are a journalist. No, uh, They say that it's just a one sentence, but it's the most difficult to write. Do you agree? Okay, so let's test our skills as you go along with me with my lecture this afternoon. Okay, uh, please uh, bear with me because first of all, I'm a teacher. So the way I handle my lecture is... Actually, I'm considering this to be my big classroom. And you are all my students. Okay? So uh, let's wait for a while. Okay, sino ba yung elementary dito? Okay. Please raise your, high, your hand. Okay. How about high school, junior and senior high school? Marami din ba? How about college? Okay, maraming college. So, I have to adjust my lecture presentation to three different levels. Okay, uh, first for the elementary, I have to give you the basic information and to the college, it's a more challenging one, okay? So, uh, Okay, 
So uh, this is my cover plate. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so I divided my presentation this afternoon into five uh, semi chapters. So we'll be starting with a preview, and then uh, we'll identify some uh, rule breakers, and then we have to appreciate. Uh, maybe the great beginnings, especially for authors who did great job in uh, lead writing. And then the importance of the lead, finding the lead. Next, please. Writing the lead, types of leads, good reporting, and uh, some basic elements which involve the color, SVO, length, and readability. And the last would be the summary. Okay? So let's start with the preview. Okay, when we say preview, we will be defining, understanding the basic things about what is a lead. So lead is what? Okay, it gives the readers the sense of the story. Okay, so meaning it's the main idea. You have to be inspired in something so that you can have a basis on what you're going to write about. And then... The lead sentence usually consists of or contains one idea. Okay, as a rule in English writing or a sentence writing, we have to write one idea at a time. Okay? Okay, that's the simplest rule. Then it should be followed by the subject verb object agreement in your sen sentence. Okay, that is for clarity. And as a rule, although we don't usually observe this, the lead should not exceed 35 words. Okay? The shorter, the better. Do you agree? Yeah, but still, but it's the most difficult way of writing. Okay? Next. So let's first identify some rule breakers. Okay? Okay, these are examples of leads okay uh, published uh, in in the united states okay what do you think is there something wrong with number one okay we slept last night in the enemy's camp okay what's what's wrong there there is the absence of the name of the reporter no so when we write news, there's always a byline. Okay? Number two, I feel as if I had been fought by dirty hands, said Martha Graham. So, what is wrong here? What was being violated? Are you familiar with certain rules in lead writing? Okay? Are you familiar with a quotation lead? Okay, that is not acceptable. Okay? So number two violated the standard rule of quotation. Next, the million to one shot came in. Hell froze over. A month of Sundays hit the calendar. Don Larson today pitched a no hit, no run, no man reads. First game in a World Series. Okay, that's a very long lead. Okay, what's wrong here? How many sentences have you observed? There are four. And there are three cliches. And that is also a violation. Next. What price glory? Two eyes, two legs, an arm, $12 a month. Okay. What, what lead is this? Anybody? The first line. Okay. It's a question lead. Okay. So, and that is also not encouraged, okay? We don't use question lead in our news story. Next, snow followed by small boys on sleds. Ano yan? Parang OA, di ba? Okay, it's a little bit of a joke. So, meaning it's not serious. So, that is also considered as a violation. Next, please. So, but then, they are, we see them to be different 
but they are memorable. Diba? Because for what reason? Okay, the deeds that we have presented work because they meet the two requirements of lead writing, which is number one, they symbolize in graphic fashion the heart of the event, meaning they were able to get the heart or the idea of the event. And what is important, they also entice the reader to read on. So meaning it captured the attention of the readers because of the way they write their lead paragraphs. Okay? Uh, are you following? Yes? Okay, let's go on. So I, hear, I have here two examples and then please try to choose which you think is better. Okay, uh, these are uh, examples of the leads uh, printed in the New York City newspaper. Okay, please try to read it and then try to differentiate how the words are being used how the sentences were being constructed. Okay, number one, Mayor Lensei listed facilities for public safety yesterday as his top spending priority for next year, shifting from his pledge of a year ago to make clean streets his first objective in capital expenditures. As compared to number two, Mayor Lensei dropped his broom and picked up the nightstick yesterday setting law enforcement facilities as the top priority in the city's construction plans for the coming fiscal year. So which of the two leads do you think is clear? One or two? One. Bakit? What's your basis in saying that it's number one? Okay, are the words used clear, understandable? As compared to number two, number two use some flowery words, diba? I remember, okay, uh, the word flowery, diba? Uh, I had asked one student before, okay, how, how do you define feature writing? Sir, feature writing is the use of flowery words. Is, is he correct? No, okay? <laughs> okay, let's continue. Next. Okay, let's go back first to some history. Okay, the great beginnings of good lead writing. Okay, are you familiar with Nancy Drew, Bubsy Twins, Hardy Boys? Okay, who's the author? It's Andrew Svensson. Diba? Okay, when I was in high school, I used to read Hardy Boys, uh, Nancy Drew, diba? They are mystery stories, novels. So, according to him, okay, when he writes, he set up danger, mystery, and excitement on page one. That is to capture the attention of the readers. And, to, and he actually had shared that he had rewritten page one for how many times? 20 times. Diba? So that's how you improve your introductory paragraph in your story. Okay, next. Okay, according to Leo Tolstoy, okay, the, the idea behind good writing is jumping straight into the action. Okay, that's how we should also be writing news stories. And then even the Bible, the Old Testament, okay, it has simple words, which says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? So in just one simple opening sentence, you were able to picture, picture out the main idea of what the author is trying to say. Okay? Next. Okay, anybody familiar with this? Okay, I'll give you a cup of coffee if you can identify this opening paragraph. Okay, this is very familiar to high school students. Yes? Okay, very good. Okay, this was the opening of the novel A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Okay, diba? Mm. You like it? Diba ang ganda? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. 
Okay, that's a very classic opening sen a paragraph of a novel. Next, how about this one? Do you still read novels? Oh, that's good because that's a very good preparation for you. The more you read, the better you write. Okay? How about this one? Anybody who's familiar with this paragraph? There's a word catcher. JD? Yes? Anybody? Okay, catcher in the right. Okay? Oh, now you remember. Diba? So don't forget all the novels that you read because that would also inspire you in your writing. Okay? Very good. I'm impressed. Okay? Next. So let's now proceed into understanding why lead writing is important. We have been given the backgrounds of good lead paragraphs. Now, we have to look closer, deeper into how important are lead uh, paragraphs or, or leads, diba? Next, please. So, okay, let's uh, accept the fact that as student journalists, it's really a struggle, diba? I don't know the beginnings of you or being a journalist, but then, Generally, as a teacher, I can see that sometimes students are forced to be part of an editorial board. Diba? Correct? Oh, Doon yun na lang na-realize na, ay, may talent pala ako magsulat. Diba? So you have to thank your teacher or your advisor. But generally, students are not really interested in writing. Okay, I can attest to that because I've been teaching journalism for more than a decade. And then the first subject, news writing, I have 20 students. And then when we proceed to the next course, which is editorial writing, I only have, I only have half of that number. And then when I proceed to magazine writing, a publication, I only have eight. And then the final, which is newspaper, the publication, I only have five. Okay, I, you can see yung declining number, but then these remaining students are really passionate into writing. And I'm very happy to have those. Okay? So, uh, why? Because writing, okay, it concentrates the mind, and then it forces you to decide what in the story is important, what you want to emphasize in order to give shape to the rest of the story that you are going to write, okay? So that's, that's how important lead paragraphs. That's how important how these introductory paragraphs are in your story, okay? Next, please. Okay, so once you have found the thread, or meaning when you say thread, it's the main idea. Huh? The, uh, all the anecdotes, illustrations, and quotes are pearls that hang on this thread. Okay, please read this description by Thomas Bowell, okay, a reporter from of the, the Washington Post. Okay, he described how significant leads are by comparing it to pearl and necklace. Diba? Ano sabi niya? The thread may seem very humble, the pearls may seem very flashy, but it's still the thread that makes the necklace. Okay? So, very beautiful. Diba? Mm. Next. And then according to John McPhee of the New York uh, Times writer, he said, I've often heard writers say that if you've written your lead, you have 90% of their story. Do you agree? Diba? Makatulog ka na, makahinga ka na, pagdatapos mo na